pocket party. Billy O'Connor, Vietnam vet, author, firefighter, written two books. All go. Talks about nothing but, but bad decisions. Bad decisions <laughs> make good stories. So yeah, I got a plenty of stories to tell. I made a lot of wrong turns. For those of us who want to write about our lives or stories, what are some writing advice tips you'd give us? Well, write what you know. That's number one rule. I mean, uh, if you're a 25-year-old kid, you're not going to write about kidnapping hookers and throwing them in the trunk. You know what I mean? We're not buying that. you got to write about what you know. And uh, if you made enough bad decisions in your life, chances are you got a lot of stories. And like we, we talked about before, you write about not what you remember, but what you absolutely cannot forget. Because everybody's got that story in them uh, that pretty much is unbelievable. We've all had those kind of experiences. As a matter of fact, that's how you can tell fact from fiction. Fiction has to be believable. Fact doesn't. Because if you're going to write fiction, you're going to want the people that you're writing to believe you. When something is so far out that it's absolutely unbelievable, chances are it's the truth. Do you remember the first thing that you wrote where people were like blown away, like, whoa, this is really good? The very like, first time I ever put pen to paper, I was 62 years old. and uh, Wow. Yeah, I swear to God, I wrote a story about, uh, it was during the Iraq War. It was during the invasion of Iraq, and I compared Iraq to the bullshit they sold me in Vietnam. And uh, I wrote the piece, and it went viral. I was like, it was, I was amazed. I, I got like three or 400 emails the next day from people all over the world, New Zealand, mm. Ireland, Australia. Mr. O'Connor, Mr. O'Connor, I read this, and I didn't even know what they were talking about. And I said to my girlfriend, who was an academic, and I said, well, who are these people? And she said, you got published. I said, what does that mean? She goes, somebody published your work. I had written a, that paper, a one-on-one paper, and it went viral. So it was really like uh, intoxicating. So it made me want to learn how to write. And uh, when I went to journalism school at the University of Florida, man, I paid attention. I was paying the money. I was there to learn. I knew I had stories. I knew I had a ton of stories. I wanted to learn how to tell them right. So you did my podcast, Pocket Party Podcast, if you want to hear the full almost two hours. Uh, but one of the things you talked about was owning a bar in, uh, was it Bronx? In Queens. In Bronx? I, had in Queens. I, I had two joints, actually. The first joint was Poets. That was like a rock joint. And uh, I had a lot of fun, man. I mean, in those days, I was drinking hard. I was partying hard. I was young. I was Irish. But the stories were just coming at you, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. And it was like, it was yeah. like, I was like a kid in a candy store, you know? They'd never be able to shut me off at my own bar at 4.30 in the morning. I was running for mayor all over the neighborhood. There was women. <laughs> so it was a lot of laughs. I had a lot of laughs. But I've always had a lot of laughs, man. I can have fun in, the, in a phone book. You know, I'm going to have fun no matter where I go because life is short, man. I ain't, you know, I mean, when you waste time, eternity suffers. I, you you got to have fun, man. You got to be happy goes too quick, like John was talking about before, how quick it goes. Can, can I cut in? Please. My first time I ever wrote anything that yeah. had any substance is exactly the opposite of this gentleman. Mm. I used to be a flea market vendor at Roosevelt Flea Market, and I was about 19, and I was in the men's stall, and I took out <laughs> a Sharpie. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote what is probably a short story or a poem. It said, I am a flea market vendor. I tell my friends and relatives I own my own business, but all I do is sell shit out of a station wagon in a parking lot. <laughs> I have no medical insurance. I live at home with my parents, and I'll probably die in a rented U-Haul. Yeah. Something along those lines that to this day, a few people at Reddit uh, still talk about the honesty of it. Uh -huh. And then about five years later, I was a New York City cop, on 4th of July, I was posted on an elevated subway station uh -huh. in Coney Island. So all of, at midnight, all the fireworks went off. And a few people had said to me, old-time transit cop said, if you're visible 40 feet up in the air in a uniform, you're like a target of a sniper or somebody crazy in a building that wants, at midnight on 4th of July, mm. is going to shoot you because mm. they can't hear the gun go off. Oh, yeah. wow. Right. And I wrote in my memo book that if I get shot and killed tonight, I don't want Mayor Dinkins at my funeral. <laughs> and I wrote a long story why I didn't want him there, because you put me out alone. They don't even put you out with two men. They put one guy out alone in the subway of New York that's 21 years old. You know what I mean? And, and then they put you on an elevator. That's your, that's your mm. station. You're mm. literally 40 feet in the air. You're like a, a moving target for any psycho that had a rifle. But mm. that was the second time that I ever wrote anything. And basically, it was like a weird... Uh, Goodbye note. Mm. If I die tonight, this is what I want. 
Whoa. Well, I mean, as a bookmaker in New York, I love Dinkins, man. Dinkins couldn't find shit in the bottom of his shoe. He was <laughs> terrific. I mean, all he wanted to do was play tennis. Yeah. Giuliani got became uh, we. There Dinkins was, a lot was of the heat. mayor before Giuliani. Right. There was a lot of heat when Giuliani became mayor. He made his his bones as a crime buster. You know, he was looking at a fucking clean house. Giuliani did commercials for my sitcom. Oh yeah. I had my own sitcom back in the day, and Giuliani said, "You got me for fifteen minutes. Don't make a fool of me." And I literally had to write in two commercials that no one helped me with. You know, the producers didn't right. know what to. So I we, we we did a back and forth, and then here he had a big seat, like fifteen feet high leather seat. And I said, you gonna watch my sitcom? He said, yes. I said, are you gonna take notes? Yes. Are you gonna are you gonna download it? Yes. And then I said, can I sit in your chair? <laughs> and he goes, don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was really nice to me. Yeah. Hey, tell us that story about um, you were playing. You were in a billiard hall and it got robbed. Oh yeah, I was playing poker. I was about 24, 25 years old. I was always a compulsive character, you know, an avalanche of vices, drugs, gambling, uh, booze, women. Uh, and we were back in a pool, a pool room, playing, playing uh, Italian pool room in the Bronx, playing a high state poker game. I was about 23 years old. I was a thousand on the table. I was up about 800, which I had stuffed in my sock, right? Suddenly the door bursts open, two guys blow in with shotguns, right? All right, boys, this is stick in the face. Throw all your money in the middle of the table. Everybody pushes their money in the middle of the table, but I ain't going into my sock, right? I got 800 stuck in my sock. Well, one of the guys takes a shotgun, he smacks this old man over the head, oh. I swear to God, this guy's head opened up on the water belt. There was blood all over the green felt. Now, I mean, I'm in my sock, guys are pulling money out of their ass. Some guys are looking to take out a loan. I mean, you know, just everybody's scared shit. Except for my friend Blinky. My friend Blinky, he didn't panic. Blinky was always quick. He turned around and he said, Billy, Billy, here's the 500 out of you. I said, no, 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 no. I was with Blinky one time in a Everybody <laughs> listen to Derek Carter. Yeah. We all know he's the party starter. Uh, so if you want to listen to a podcast for free, listen to a pocket party. party.